Do any of these sound like you? Well, I've planned to draw, I've got everything ready, I really want to, but I look at my reference and my blank sheet of paper and I think, I just can't do this, it's not gonna work out, it's too hard, it's not worth the time, I should go and do something else that I need to do. Or, I don't want anyone to see my work unless I think it's really turned out well. How about, I seem to spend more time erasing wrong lines than I do drawing lines that are actually still there at the end of the drawing. Sometimes I just mess up my paper with so much erasing. How about if a drawing is starting to turn out well, I actually get nervous because I'm sure I'm going to do something to wreck it. Or if I make a mistake that I can't erase, then I always start again or sometimes it's too late or I've lost enthusiasm and I just give up and go and do something else. I find that much of my drawing experience is actually being preoccupied about making a mistake and it can become quite a tense affair rather than relaxing and feeling good about actually drawing. How about, although I really do want to draw, I often don't draw for long periods because I'm convinced that I just don't have the talent and there's no point. Or does this sound like you? I don't like drawing if there's anyone else around because I don't want anyone to see what I'm doing until I know for sure that it's turned out. So do any of these points sound like you or more than a few, maybe even most of them? Look, if this is the case, then perfectionism may be an issue for you to think about with your art. Why does it matter? Why is this a problem? Firstly, because, well, it's not much fun being a perfectionist. And art should be fun, rewarding, calming, instead of being a tense, frustrating, fearful, even condemning thing at times. And secondly, because none of the points that we've talked about have anything to do with my art process development. In fact, they often undercut and make much more difficult a productive, effective art journey. See, perfectionism often masquerades as just having high standards. And so we can have ourselves think it's a good thing, it's a helpful thing, because I want to learn to draw to a high standard. But the reality is that perfectionism actually has nothing to do with my drawing, with my art, and it's all about making myself feel better in some way about myself. And it's the perfect artwork that somehow is going to make me feel better about myself, convince me that there's something true about myself that I want to believe is true. Whatever need, insecurity, fear, something negative that I have about myself that I'm trying to prove to myself or to others isn't true. It's the perfect artwork that's going to help to do this for me, which is why I feel so much pressure, so much frustration, fear, angst when I go to draw. Because as well as proving that I am capable or whatever positive things I want to prove about myself. I certainly don't want to prove the opposite to myself and to others by having something which doesn't turn out. I don't want to prove that I'm not talented, that I can't draw or whatever the point is. And the third reason why perfectionism is not a helpful thing for us. The first reason is it's not much fun. The second reason is that it doesn't have anything to do with my art. The third reason is this, that because this desire to produce the perfect artwork is not about the art, it causes me to practice my art, to draw in a way that actually isn't going to be the best way, the most effective way for me to learn to draw. Because the focus is always going to be in the wrong place because the focus is always going to be too much on having a great drawing at the end. I'm jumping ahead to the end of the process and demanding a high result because I need to feel good by having it. And that's not going to be a helpful way to learn the drawing process. And I think this is sometimes why those draw along, copy line by line drawing videos are so popular on YouTube because we can get a great looking drawing at the end much more easily than actually having to creatively draw an original drawing ourselves. And if my need is to feel good with a great drawing at the end, then it gives me that very easily. 
but it hasn't taught me the creative processes that take place in my mind, which direct my hand and my lines on the paper. And that's the most important part of drawing. And that's what I need to learn to be able to draw my own original drawings. And an important part of learning to draw is putting lines in the wrong places because that's how I learn to put them in the right places by making mistakes, identifying them, and next time correcting them, or even in this drawing, correcting them. But if my process, if my mindset doesn't allow a mistake to be a relaxed part of my journey, I can't get to that place of confidently getting my lines in the right place. What if I make a mistake, especially if I'm drawing in ink? Well, I have a few videos on this, but I am always drawing in ink and I'm always making mistakes. And I almost always draw through them. Mistakes never look as bad as when I first make them, especially if it's early in the drawing, which is when we're more likely to make a mistake. But if I put the correct line in on top of or next to the wrong one, then the brain will favor that because the brain always wants to see what it expects to see and the wrong line will just be a much less noticeable extra line than if we leave it as the only line. I have two videos where I restarted the drawing that I was doing for the video because I made such an error that I couldn't fix that it would affect the finished drawing and the lesson. But in both videos, I show the drawing that I abandoned and explain why I started again, because mistakes are part of the learning process. And for that reason, we need to embrace them. And when I redrew that part of the drawing that I got up to when I abandoned it, I redrew those sections much more easily, much more quickly, and quite frankly, much better drawings, even the parts that weren't mistakes, because we improve when we move on. If making a mistake paralyzes me, or worse, stops me, then I never learn the benefits of mistake, which are a natural and very effective and important part of the drawing process. So if this is me, and I have some of these perfectionistic, unhelpful mindsets, what can I do to create a better relationship with my art and with my art journey? I think a two-pronged approach can be helpful. And the first is for me to try and work out why I'm putting all this pressure on myself for my artwork to be perfect. Things like this usually come from a place in our lives, often a long way back. It could be something to do with our parents, our siblings, our teachers, a particular art class lesson at school. Sometimes it's just one significant incident that happened in my life. Or it may have been in a different area of life, not art, but I've embraced perfectionism as a general principle for various reasons, and so now that does affect my art and my art practice. Now, I'm not a counsellor and I can't help you go through that process, but I know from my own experience that to be able to work out some of the reasons why I'm thinking and therefore acting the way I am can be a really helpful thing to do. But the second way of approaching perfectionism in our lives, besides trying to work out where it comes from, is to make choices to do things that aren't directed by my perfectionism. In fact, to do things that will actually hit my perfectionism on the head straight on. I can choose to organize my drawing disregarding the pressures and the patterns that perfectionism has led me to have in the past. So I don't let a perfect drawing at the end be in what I'm trying to do but I embrace the process because it's the process that will enable me to improve. And a great way to stop thinking about the artwork at the end is to put emphasis on the process. And I think it's helpful to think of our art sessions as being exercises, because even the word exercises has to do with learning. Exercises are not perfect. Exercises do not produce artworks. Exercises don't even have to be kept. And all of this takes the pressure off us, which perfectionism puts on, and makes the drawing experience a lot less fun. We can do exercises where we make ourselves draw in ink without erasers. Obviously, I'm going to make mistakes. So obviously there will be lines in the wrong place at the end. We can make it really fun by giving ourselves a time limit. So that gives us a time pressure rather than a perfection pressure. And what can often come from this is when I stop worrying about mistakes and make myself draw quickly, I can discover whatever my natural brisk drawing gestural style of line work is. And who knows, this may even become my preferred way of drawing. 
So timed exercises are also very helpful because I know I'm not going to do a masterpiece in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even 60 minutes. But by setting myself up so that I can't produce that perfect artwork, I don't have to try. I can stop thinking of that. I'm not even presuming I'm going to keep what I draw because I understand that my drawing is part of a process. And while I will at times try and do artworks, most of what I do will still be practice pieces. If I were learning the piano, I would know that almost everything I played was going to be a practice piece and I would know that I was going to make mistakes. And I would know that through making those mistakes, I would come to understand the sorts of places I would make mistakes in and therefore what I needed to practice more. And the more I did that and noted my mistakes and gave them extra attention, the better my playing would be. But somehow we think that when we put a line on a piece of paper for a drawing, it works differently to learning the piano. No, most of our drawings, particularly at the start, will be practice pieces. And I still do practice pieces, and particularly when I'm learning to draw with new media or new subject matter or new drawing techniques and styles. I just have fun with the lines on the paper. Not for a moment do I think I'm going to do anything that's going to end up in a frame on a wall. I need to start to focus on the right process for learning to draw. If I'm wanting to draw directly in ink, then I should practice drawing directly in ink. If I want to be able to do large pencil portraits of people, then I should practice doing that. If I want to be able to draw without an eraser, then I should practice without an eraser. If I want to draw doing freehand straight lines, then I should practice doing freehand straight lines. Because practice is the only way to get to the place where we want to go. And if I'm going to watch how to draw teaching videos, I should watch ones that in the end are teaching me how to think creatively because that's the one thing I'm going to have to be able to do to know where to put my lines on the paper. And while that can be a confusing and messy experience at the start, with practice we do learn how to observe, how to think, how to translate a scene into line on our paper to get the effect that we want to capture in our artwork. And in the end, nobody can give that to me, but a process where I can embrace my mistakes will certainly lead to great improvement in my art, which is what we all want. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Stephen Travers. I'll see you next time. Bye.